What's good everyone, it's ZigZag here. Welcome back to another GeoGuessr video. Good to have you along on the channel today. And if you didn't catch my video a few days ago, I made a part one of a tip for every single GeoGuessr country in the world. Now in that part, we covered Africa, South America, North America, and Oceania. And this video is gonna take the rest of Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. I'll have the first video linked in the description so you can go check that one out if you missed it. And so let's get straight into the tips, starting in Southeast Asia. First tip of the day is for Taiwan, where on the island of Pengu County, you often get these avenues of trees either side of the road. Now in this example, we have a bunch of Norfolk pines, which are also really common in that area of the world. These are the islands here that constitute Pengu County. You can see there's a whole lot of coverage there. Definitely worth paying attention to. If you get an island vibe, you might be there. My next tip is for Japan and specifically the prefecture of Okinawa. Now in Okinawa, this is what the typical house looks like. As opposed to the rest of Japan, you have these flat roofs, white houses. The rounds here almost give you a bit of a Greek vibe. And on top of that, you often have these palm trees, which also indicate that you're gonna be further south in Japan. If you weren't sure, Okinawa is all the way down here. And again, you can see there's quite a lot of coverage here. So knowing that architectural difference is quite useful. My next tip is for Korea. And in Korea, sometimes you have this little camera strapped to the back of the Google car. Now this camera is actually only found in two regions, particularly commonly around Pohang. So if you see it, definitely consider clicking there, but you can also see it northeast of Seoul. Next up is Mongolia, where you can see this very interesting color coverage near the town of Hutgal. Basically, you can see a whole bunch of these autumnish looking trees. The whole place is looking quite barren because it's very cold there. And often you can also see the lake, which is right nearby. So when you see that kind of coverage, click near Hutgal, which is just over here in the north of the country. And if you want a more general tip, the north of Mongolia has many more trees than the south. My next tip is for Russia, where you really want the most accurate guesses you can possibly get. And my tip is specifically for the Oblast of Omsk, where you get this very bright generation four camera. It's super flat, like absolutely flat in most places and you have these clumps of birch trees. You can see this clump of birch trees is very overgrown, very tightly packed together, but then you're going to get like a big gap between the next one and the next one and the next one. So this is just what most Omsk grounds look like. Sometimes you get a bit of darker soil, but apart from that, this bright coverage in the summer is exactly what you're looking for there and it is a very, very good tip. My next tip is for Cambodia, where this particular type of palm tree that kind of looks like a pom-pom is really, really common. You can see a whole bunch more of them here. And these palms are very common also in Thailand and Sri Lanka. And then also you have to watch out because the Brazilian state of Ceara has very similar ones as well. But all in all, they should be more common in Southeast Asia and Cambodia specifically has the most. One useful little tip that pros use a lot for Thailand is these rods that stick out of the top of their poles. Now you certainly don't see that all the time in Thailand, but out of any country I can think of, Thailand is the most likely to just randomly have a rod sticking out the top with an extra line coming out of it. And actually check it out, we've got a Cambodian palm in this location as well just showing how common they are. The town of Pakse in Laos is pretty distinguishable because it's got kind of middle-sized hills both sides of it. So if you are in Laos, you have the Google car and you see middle-sized hills both sides instead of big ones or epic ones, then I think Pakse is the town to send. Of course, always check that you're driving right-hand side of the road because Thailand will drive left instead and they use very, very similar architecture. These are the typical apartment buildings of Hong Kong. They're much taller than most places in the world and you can pretty much see them in most Hong Kong rounds. So once you see this many Many buildings that are this tall and they're all white should be Hong Kong. Macau is very distinguishable from Hong Kong by the fact that it only has the generation two coverage from all the way back in 2008. So things are never going to look particularly modern. On top of that, this is the only place you're going to see Chinese mixed with Portuguese. You can see, I believe it says Rua there, which is the name for road in Portuguese. And then of course we're driving left hand side of the road, which would make no sense for anywhere else that Portugal colonized, apart from Mozambique actually, but there you go. Now Bhutan is one of the only countries in the world where you'll come across the infamous silver Google car. It looks really cool quite white, but in certain kind of lights, you can tell that it is indeed silver. Also worth noting is that it often goes ghost and you can't quite see the whole car. That's a very common glitch in Bhutan. Also just look around at the buildings. Most times if you have any architecture, Bhutan will be easy because they all look white and have these wooden roofs. Moving on to India now. And while this is not distinctive to the state of Karnataka, it is a very good tip to say that their crossbars on their poles are almost always horizontal. In most other Indian states, they'll kind of go up diagonally like this in a V shape, but Karnataka keeps it pretty straight and it's also quite a huge state as you can see so definitely worth learning this tip. Pakistan shows up very very rarely in GeoGuessr because Google didn't do much coverage there but one of the all-time greatest matters in GeoGuessr for getting Pakistan is the fact that they wear wide pants over there. Now you can see people wearing jeans but just take a look around and see what the men are wearing because over in India pretty much every man wears jeans whereas in Pakistan most of them are going to have these wider pants. On to Sri Lanka now which is a country that has very interesting poles. Here's a good example of a pretty average Sri Lankan 
pole and you can see the insulators are absolutely huge. They're about double the size of what you'd see in another country, maybe even triple. So if you're kind of playing NMPZ and you look off into the distance and you can see these massive looking insulators, you should definitely consider Sri Lanka over any other country in the area. My tip for Bangladesh is that it's exceptionally common to have at least some rice growing near you at most times. I would say it's almost the majority of rounds that you see this. So if you see rice, consider Bangladesh and then also look for some Bengali script to try and confirm it. Now, Nepal has tiny pockets of official Google coverage and generally speaking, they appear more so towards the side of the country that has Mount Everest, which is of course the east of the country. If you find yourself in Nepal, generally speaking, click around here. Here we are in Kyrgyzstan. And of course we can't talk about this country without talking about this beautiful Google car, which holds so many mysteries and great tips. One such a tip is that if you get this black dot on the rear view mirror, then you're pretty much always gonna be west rather than east of Bishkek. This is one I've seen a lot of good players not knowing. So definitely get it in your arsenal. You should be somewhere in this region here. An interesting tip for the UAE is that they actually use quite a lot of wooden poles in this country. You wouldn't really expect that considering how few trees they actually have in the country, but there you go, they actually do import wood or something like that. And seeing this many wooden poles is actually not at all atypical. Just like in the UAE, Qatar tends to have its signs both in Arabic and in English. But one of the big differences between these two countries is that you would never have these blue and white chevrons in the UAE. My tip for Egypt is... Hope that helps. <laughs> Lebanon shows up very rarely and basically only in Beirut. And Beirut is quite a distinctive city because it always has the ocean to the north here. So if you see that with a bit of land east as well, then you should be in Beirut. This particular way of painting the pole with the black and white stripes is very common in Israel and Palestine. However, in Palestine, this white Suzuki Swift is often following you around. So that's a really good tip. This was the follow car for Palestine. Unlike Palestine, Israel recently got generation four camera, the brand new coverage. It's not too common here, but you can definitely see it. And when you do, just guess in Israel shouldn't be in Palestine. Turkey is one of the easier countries in GeoGuessr, but if you really want a great no moving tip, check out at the back of the car here, where you often have this antenna with the white car. You can just see a tiny bit of the white car next to my head here. And that white car is easily most common in Turkey. And there are no other countries that have it that look like Turkey. So if you have this kind of landscape, the peppery looking road, then send Turkey with that car. I somehow forgot Jordan. So if you're in Jordan and you have massive dry mountains surrounding the city, then you shouldn't be up in Amman, but rather down here in Aqaba, which has massive mountains, as does Eilat, which is on the Israeli side. Greece is a country that tends to have very, very pale roads. As you play Geogasset more, you'll notice that some countries tend to have quite dark asphalt, but that's really not the case in Greece where it's pretty much always white in color. At this stage in time, Bulgaria is one of the few countries in Europe to have this red car with the short antenna in the generation four coverage. And I believe this one's also in Slovakia and Sweden. Different looking countries to be sure, but definitely keep that in mind too. Now, many of you viewing at home would know that Romania tends to have a lot of those holy poles, the concrete poles with holes in them. But as you can see, we're in Bucharest here and we have a round concrete pole. Now the rule there is that generally speaking inside cities, you're gonna have many more round normal looking poles. Whereas out in the country, you're pretty much always using those typical holy poles. Here we are in Ukraine. And one thing I found about this country is that the roads are often slightly pink in hue. Now this stands in contrast to Russia where pink roads are markedly less common. So if you're in a 50-50 and you have that, consider Ukraine. Okay, here we are in Hungary, fairly standard round. This roof though, with the triangular indent is something you do typically see quite a lot in Hungarian architecture. Now this is something I'd say is more a feature of Germanic architecture. So it's particularly common in Germany, Czechia, maybe Austria too. But I think that because Austria and Hungary used to be one country, it's something you also see all over Hungary as well. In Serbia, the car normally doesn't have an antenna, but when you do have the antenna, you should be on the road from Nish in the South to Novi Sad in the North. It pretty much sticks to the highway, but the car drove in both cities as well as particularly in Belgrade. Over in North Macedonia now, and there are definitely exceptions to this rule, but I find that the coverage in North Macedonia is particularly sunny. So if you're in the Balkan area, you're not quite sure, that could be something you use to slightly tilt yourself towards North Macedonia. Unlike Montenegro, the backs of signs in Albania are black, so you can definitely use that to distinguish the two countries. Montenegrin number plates have a little bit of red next to the blue strip. That's the Montenegrin crest. And that can be quite useful because the Albanian number plates are quite a bit different and the red 
really does shine through on many of the blurs. Croatia is another one of those countries with very, very pale roads. This is conjecture, but I would say the further towards Greece you get, the more pale they're going to be as well. Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia, is I believe the only place in the country to have these green house numbers. Pretty much the entirety of the rest of the country uses red ones, which are also pretty distinctive. In a similar way, Prague can be distinguished by its big red street signs, which pretty much always say Praha on them, which means Prague, and then the number of the district. A similar style exists in Vienna, where you have a blue sign with the name of the street on it, and then the district at the start. Also worth noting is that these little flags, the Austrian flags on the signposts are only in Vienna area as well. Slovakia is another country that has its crest on the number plates, and you can see a tiny tad of red on this number plate on the left side as well. Now this is very useful for distinguishing it from Czechia, where they don't have a red crest. Poland and the Baltics often feature this kind of white brick, which is quite distinctive to that area of Europe. Not really something you see too often elsewhere at all. This is the first location I clicked on in Lithuania. You can just see the white bricks everywhere. But also something I wanted to point your attention to is that Baltic signs tend to have their backs folded, which is definitely something you can use if you're in a pickle. Just like Lithuania, Latvia is a very flat country. But if you see this kind of undulating landscape with slight hills, then you're quite likely to be on the Russian border in the east. This black car with the short antenna shows up in the Baltics, but I would say it's most common in Estonia. The dirt roads in Estonia are also kind of known to be a bit narrower and maybe a bit rockier as well than the other Baltics. If you see Generation 2 coverage in Finland and it's snowy, then I would definitely lean towards guessing in the southern bulge of the country. Compared to its Nordic neighbours, Sweden is much more likely to have the white car with the long antenna. Norway, on the other hand, is a country that in Generation 3 has no antenna at all in most circumstances. Here we are in Denmark, and this is a country that uses a lot more red brick architecture than the other Scandinavian countries. This kind of bus stop with the green H with a yellow circle around it is common in Austria and Germany, but it's just worth bearing in mind that now that Germany has come out, you can't just go Austria when you see this, you have to consider which of the two it's going to be. Here we are in Switzerland, and Swiss signs tend to have this metal guard around them, which you can see in a few other countries like Luxembourg, but it's very useful for Switzerland. The island of Sardinia in Italy is famous for having the most cacti out of anywhere in the country of Italy, and really I can't think of anywhere in Europe that has more cacti than Sardinia, so keep that in mind. This kind of house with the black support beams and red shutters on the windows definitely doesn't look typically French, and that is the type that you find down here in the southwest border on the Pyrenees with Spain. A lot of Andorra was covered during the autumn, so you can just see a lot of yellow leaves around that country basically all the time. Easily the most tricky region in Spain is that of Galicia. Because of its Celtic influence, you often see houses that look British or French or something like that. I mean, this is definitely not what typical Spanish houses look like. Combine that with a lot of hedgerows and a very green landscape, and you have to make sure when you see this architecture, you also consider Spain. This kind of fancy chimney is found in the south of Portugal, right down on the coast here. Monaco just got brand new Generation 4 coverage, so if a place kind of looks like Nice or something, you have to consider Monaco as well. Obviously, it's a pretty distinctive city, so if you just take a look at it on Google Street View, you should be able to get it, but it's an interesting development, and you have to consider that now when you're playing in Europe. The other micro state, San Marino, is stuck in Generation 2, but you can also sometimes find Generation 3 Trekker backpack coverage, so also consider that. Malta has a real abundance of Asian cars. Basically, on this first location I clicked, I got a bunch of Asian cars in front of me. That combined with Mediterranean architecture should always put you in Malta. And if you're ever unsure, you can peer through and see that from the perspective of the driver, this steering wheel is on the right-hand side, which means it's left-hand drive country, which means you're in Malta. In the Netherlands, crossings and road endings often have these alternating long and short lines, and it's quite a unique thing to the Netherlands. It's quite a well-established thing in the GeoGuessr community that the quality of the roads in Belgium is just slightly less than that of France, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, or its neighbours. So if you see a road like this that just kind of comes across as a bit lower quality, you might be in Belgium. Luxembourg is a country with Generation 4 camera and Generation 2 camera, but you hardly ever see the Generation 3 camera there, so shy away from guessing in Luxembourg if you have that Generation 3 camera. This is very typical coverage for Northern Scotland in the UK. Up here, you have a lot of this long, dead grass growing on the side of the road, and a lot of plantations of pine trees as well. Interestingly, Ireland is the only country in the EU that uses these yellow diamond style of warning signs, the same ones that you get in Australia and the US. So that's a pretty good distinguishing difference between that and the UK. If you see that you're in Iceland and you have a very mossy and volcanic looking area with very black soil and this kind of white moss growing on everything, then you're very likely to be west of Reykjavik where you have that and also on this peninsula north of Reykjavik as well. I knew I'd at least forget one, I've probably forgot more. But here's Belarus which shows up extremely, extremely rarely and only in the capital city Minsk. And in Minsk you have these tiny black bollards with the circle on top. Those ones are unique to Minsk 
Minsk and a very good clue. Normally when you're here, you're gonna see them. Okay, and with Belarus done, I believe we have covered every single country in the world that has GeoGuessr Google Street View. So guys, if you want me to run it back and do this series again, I'd be happy to. If there's a particular continent you want me to focus on, I'm also happy to do that. Also country breakdowns could be something I do in the future. So just let me know with the top comment of this video what you want to see. But yeah, guys, massive thank you for making it to the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Fun to make. Shout out to Poison for the edit and shout out to the community for coming up with these great metas. Guys, I'll see you guys in a video very soon. Till next time and goodbye.